my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to this project video where I show you how to make my design of folding trestle. Now the great thing about these trestles is that I've designed them so they take a sacrificial insert which just fits in like so and it means you can cut sheet goods with your circular saw without any risk of damaging the trestles themselves. Now the trestles fold quite simply and you can store them folded, you can put them in the back of your van or your car folded and then you open them out and there is a cross brace which you then fit across to make them nice and secure. You can also put sacrificial pieces of wood like this crossways on the trestles which means that when you've got a sheet of uh, material here you can not only cut it this way easily but you can also cut it that way as well. Now I've already dimensioned my stock and I've got a piece of 75 by 25 millimetre wood which will form the base of the top section. I've got two pieces of 65 by 25 which will form the sides and then I've got eight pieces of 55 by 20 and these will form the four legs and the four cross pieces. Right, I've cut all four of these cross pieces, they're 690 millimetres long. Now my original trestles are set at an angle of 15 degrees, which gives them a nice stable base when used as a pair for doing sheet work, because sometimes those sheets can be quite heavy. But this trestle that I'm making, I'm going to reduce the footprint and therefore I'm reducing that angle to 12 degrees. And I've set the angle on my saw now to 12 degrees and I'm going to make an angle cut which will be at the foot end of all four legs. So that's all four legs cut with the angle at the bottom. Right, I've got all four of my legs and I've just made this 12 degree cut on the ends here, which are all lined up, and I've used this square just to make sure that they're all together. I'm going to do my centre line from my domino cuts at 150 millimetres. Now, at this stage, I'm going to mark the legs as pairs, so I'm going to do cross cross and circle circle. So that now tells me that this pair of legs go together and that's the inner face and this pair of legs go together and that's the inner face there. Now this next bit may look tricky but it's not. I've got here a pair of bench dogs here and here and a piece of wood with parallel sides and I've pushed that against there and now that is representing the floor as far as our end profile pair of legs might go. Now what I need to do is to work out what the finished height of my trestle should be. And I want my trestle to end up with its sacrificial piece of wood to be the same height as the MFT3, which is 900 millimetres. I now need to take account of the thickness of my top and the size of my piece that's going to be sacrificial that sits in there. And I, from that, have worked out that my legs should be 805 millimetres straight up from the floor. But of course they're not straight, they're at an angle, like so. So I've drawn a line here which is 805 millimetres from the floor and it's a parallel line. I'm now going to take my legs, I'm actually using two of them together to help me judge that there's no uh, discrepancy at the bottom here that they're flat against the floor and I'm not wiggling it around like this or that in the wrong way. So I'm positioning them now here and I'm making sure that there's no gap and then I'm just going to take away the second one. That was only there to help me get that uh, looking right down here and I then draw the pencil line all the way up here to where it intersects with my line that represents the bottom of the box that goes on top. From that I can now take one of my legs, lay it down on here in exactly the right place and then mark on that leg there and on this side where that line 
goes across and that allows me now to see where this leg should be cut but we're not going to cut it at this stage what we're going to do is we're going to put the rail in have it all glued up in place and we're going to cut the leg and the rail at the same time at 12 degrees and we'll do that with the circular saw but for now we need to know where this is so that we can work out where the joint should be that fixes the rail to the leg. So I've got my one leg which has a pencil line where approximately uh, the top of the leg assemblies will be. I'm now going to group the legs in pairs as though they are pairs opposite each other. That means that I'm taking the 12 degree cutoffs at the bottom here and holding them together like so, so they form a little V. And I'm doing that, then lining up the legs, making sure they are square, I'm now going to hold them in place with a clamp. Like so. Now the legs are all held together and I can see that pencil mark where I know that the top of the legs will end up after they're cut. But when they're cut at 12 degrees, I want to make sure that that cut also goes through the very top of the rail that joins the two legs together. So I want my rail to be at least as high as the higher of the two pencil marks. Now my rail is 55 millimetres across which means the halfway point is at 27.5 millimetres. So I'm going to allow 2 millimetres as a margin of error and I'm then going to measure from that 2 millimetre mark to the 27.5 millimetre point and I'm then going to scribe a line across all four legs. That now will be used for the centre line which will join the legs to the rails. Right, before I take these apart, I know that I want dominoes to go in here where I've put that pencil line, so I'm now going to put a little symbol which reminds me this is where the domino mortise will go in. And I'm going to go to this end and do the same. Here are our pencil marks that we've put in at this end, and I'm putting these marks here which tells me this is where the dominoes have to go. We're now ready to start putting the domino slots in these legs. But before I start, let me just mention one area where you need to take care. When you're using the domino machine on your bench top, you do need to watch the thickness of the stock that you're putting the slots into. The reason is that if you have a piece too thin, then when you try and put your domino slot into it, uh, the domino is actually registering against the, the bench here as opposed to uh, on the registration plate here on the top of your stock. So if your stock is too thin, then you have to have it hanging over the edge of the bench like so. In our case, our stock is 20 millimetres thick, we could do it wherever we like. I've put a couple of bench dogs here, and that will give me something to push against when I'm doing my domino slots and I'm checking as I go to make sure that my mark that I put in earlier is where I'm about to put the domino slot. I've got my domino set to narrow, I've got my height setting at 20 on this scale or 10 on that scale, and I've got my depth setting set at 25. I'm using 8mm cutter because my dominoes are 8mm thick and they're 50 millimetres long. to start putting the uh, domino slots in the ends of these uh, cross pieces. Uh, I have marked the face side uh, with a mark on both ends so that I always make sure I'm consistent with the registering of the domino so therefore we have nice flat joins between uh, cross pieces and legs. 
But I now need to consider how I'm going to do these cuts. One way would be to measure the centre and put a mark on my piece of wood and then when I bring the domino up to it, I then just use that mark uh, with the uh, centering line on the machine and do my cut. But there is another way and when you've got eight joints like this to do, this other way is quicker. You use one of these and this is called a trim stop and it just fits onto the uh, sole plate here and there are a couple of little catches uh, which you slip across and tighten up. And then on the underside you have these two clamping knobs and you have these adjustable fences and uh, with uh, this device you just simply get it lined up so that it's on the centre line and then you lock off those two uh, green securing knobs and then you're ready to do repeated cuts. together now. Uh, before you start make sure you've got the right pair so they do uh, match up and then just apply the glue in the normal manner. Now the one thing to make sure is that you get your faces all on the same side. Square. Oh, look at that, absolutely spot on. Goodness gracious me. Now if you don't have a domino machine, it's possible to make joints like this, which are glued and screwed together. Now in order to assemble the top section, I am only using four screws on each side of these uh, side pieces. And the reason for that is that it does then give you the option uh, to change it uh, or to replace these side pieces should they be damaged. That's that. Our two leg frame assemblies are glued up and now I'm going to trim off the excess. Now when you do this cut, which has to be at 12 degrees remember, uh, you must make sure that you're cutting parallel to the 12 degree cut uh, that's already on the foot. Now the foot of the legs where it comes in contact with the ground, the sharp bit here needs reinforcing. You can see I've knocked a chip out already. Now it's time to put some hinges on. The only hinges I've got are these uh, big old brass ones. They're, these are four inch hinges and really they're a bit, uh, bit too big for this application. When you're fixing these hinges onto the legs, make sure that the legs are absolutely flush here with the, uh, the top. Well that's it, I've got my sacrificial piece of wood in. I put some stays on here, you need to do that. And so uh, just look at this, put this here. Get an old piece of MFT3 top, which I've been keeping, and now I've got the perfect extension to my work top. Turn my sacrificial piece of wood round, and now uh, that is the same height as the MFT3. So I've got the perfect little companion to my MFT3. Well, that's it, we're done. I really appreciate any feedback that you might have about any of my projects or reviews. Uh, even if it's just ticking the like box or the dislike box if you don't like them. But thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.